So let's talk about our Carapace Armoured Space Marines in training, who do seem to be really getting a new lease of life in the latest incarnation of Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Space Marines and the Scout Squad in particular. It seems that Games Workshop might have finally done enough to fix Space Marine Scouts to the extent where they are getting taken in competitive lists again. Really quite a turnaround, seeing as they've been ignored for the vast majority of 9th edition by a lot of armies, the main cause of that being being moved from the troops to the elite section. In the video we'll talk over the scouts' models and rules, why they've recently got kind of good, and how I think about fielding the unit in game. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight in. First of all, the scout squad in general are space marines in training. Chapters each have their own initiation protocol, but generally scouts are somewhere along the line of having their superhuman organs implanted into them, and typically tends to serve in actual combat operations in the 10th company of the chapter, getting some valuable battlefield experience before moving on to one of the other ranks of Space Marine. Not all chapters do things that way though, things like the Space Wolves and the Black Templars do things quite differently for their new recruits. In any case, the models from Games Workshop have two different kits at the moment, they're both £21, €27 Euros or $35 dollars at the moment, though this might go up a little bit in the near term with their recent price increases announced. Generally speaking, now they went down in points a bit, that you don't get an enormous amount of points for your money. It's a ratio of 1.7, which is kind of bad compared with a lot of other units in 40k. Space Marines as an army don't generally tend to be too bad on this level, lots of chunky elite infantry, but scouts are perhaps a bit less so than this. Models wise, they are slightly older ones within Games Workshop Space Marine lineup. I feel like they're not too bad for the era that they came from. A fair few people aren't the biggest fans of their head sculpts or their hairdos, maybe just looking a little bit cartoony, but I don't think that they're dreadful. There's two different kits from them from Games Workshop, one with camo cloaks, sniper rifles and a missile launcher, and one with the options for the close weapons like the combat blades, bolt guns or shotguns, and that one has a heavy bolter in it too, but you don't get any camo cloaks. If you're picking any up, I'd bear in mind that Games Workshop might well release some sort of Primaris equivalent of Scouts, maybe a version similar to those Black Templar Novitiates that we had, and knowing what they've been doing throughout 9th edition, there's a good chance that in their next data sheets, Scouts might be a bit more limited in terms of what you can take on them. They might be kind of restricted to the options actually within the box. Finally, if you were thinking about picking some up in the UK, Element Games does have them at a discount, 15% off at the moment, currently £18 down in the video description. The link down there is an affiliate link that helps support the channel if you did pick up any through that. In any case, let's talk rules, and currently Scouts and our Elite's choice for Codex Space Marines, 12 points per model, and you can get between 5 and 10 of them in a squad. Their stat line is a bit weedier than standard Space Marines, they still hit on 3s and have Strength and Toughness 4, but they only have the 1 wound rather than 2, just the 1 attack, and a 4 plus save rather than a 3 plus. They will die quite quickly to any weapons that target light infantry. At base you get frag and crack grenades and a bolt pistol, and then a choice of a primary weapon, either a combat knife, bolt gun, shotgun or sniper rifle. If you want a bit of anti-infantry damage, I feel like the shotguns and the bolt guns are kind of balanced. The shotguns get two shots at 18 inches, whereas the bolt guns are standard rapid fire. The combat knife gets you an extra attack but no AP, so it is a bit worse than chainswords. But perhaps the scout sniper rifle is the single most interesting. A single shot at heavy 1, 36 inches, strength 4, AP minus 1, 1 damage, and of course it can target characters and ignore lookout sir. Now the sniper rifles are free, I feel like they might be the best value out of any of them. You definitely could get make arguments for the other ones though for a more frontline squad that's going to be taking the fights to the enemy. Then you get a fair few other options, you get to take camo cloaks for free which are pretty handy. They give you a plus one to your saves when you're receiving the benefit of cover. Previously were a bit take or leave I thought, but now I absolutely auto include, seeing as you don't have to pay points for them. And then you get a bunch of other options, the scout sergeant can take fancy melee weapons or ranged weapons, you can take a heavy bolter or missile launcher in the squad, and a couple of chapters have some slightly altered options, the space wolves get to trade out the heavy weapon for a melter gun or plasma gun, and can also throw in another little upgraded weapon in the squad, either power sword, power axe or plasma pistol. Finally for interesting keywords, they have the core and the smokescreen keywords. Core's handy enough for getting any benefits if you happen to be near characters, and smokescreen is the one that allows you a minus one to hit via their stratagem. Overall, quite a cheap little 60 point unit that can actually bring some fairly threatening weapons to the table, but they're not really all that hard to kill. I'd say the two biggest reasons to take them are either their concealed position special rule, which allows them to set up in the midfield 
and to take points early, and the fact that they're the unit that allow you to use the land speed of Storm, really quite an interesting transport. Talking of which, this is the land speed of Storm, a 50 point little land speeder with a 4 plus save and 7 wounds. It seems that at the moment this is the thing that's drawing a lot of people to take scout squads. It's just very efficient for the points and it has some really really good transport special rules. For 50 points it moves 18 inches, actually has a bit of okay damage output with a heavy bolter and that Cerberus launcher with D6 anti-infantry shots. And 7 wounds is actually reasonably tanky for a 50 point cost, particularly for a vehicle that moves 18 inches with fly. It does also have a couple of really nice transport rules though. It's open topped so you can zip about the battlefield, your scouts firing sniper rifles and missile launchers out of it. And it also gets the assault vehicle special rule kind of similar to the Impulsor. It means that you can get the scouts out after moving it, which means that you can potentially shunt them all the way onto objectives a really long way away. Overall it's just a very efficient little transport for the cost. And perhaps one of the most important things is that it's a very cheap expendable unit in the Space Marine Army, which has value all in itself. I do quite like the way as well that it comes with a bunch of hanger-on scouts on it, that with a little bit of conversion work you can have a few more scout bodies on the board from it. That's kind of a nice little extra. In general, the reason I'd say that scouts are so good in Arcs of Omen is they got a very solid points cut and free war gear. They're down to 60 points from 70, a 14% cut on the unit, and then on top of that they get all their fancy gear thrown in for free, so the unit's going to be far more dangerous. Heavy weapons, free combi and hammer on the sergeant, and the free camo cloaks if you happen to be in cover. Overall, it's a very nice little upgrade for them, and it means that combined with the land speed of Storm, you've got a unit that's just 110 points. I feel like for the amount of fast disruption that they can do for that cost, that's really not too bad. It is kind of annoying for opponents to try and gun down transport vehicles. A lot of things just maybe aren't going to be worth moving to deal with the land speed of Storm, and even if you catch up with it, you've only killed a 50 point vehicle, and you might be able to disembark those scouts somewhere annoying. We did mention Scout War Gear earlier. My general thoughts are, though, that camo cloaks are excellent seeing as they're free. I'd probably just count them as it, even if they didn't have it. There's no reason that you wouldn't take them at this point. You could just say that your scouts are extra good at hiding, I guess. I feel that sniper rifles are probably pretty tempting, whether or not they're in a land speed of storm or not. Being able to wing around and fire sniper shots out of the open top is quite good. I feel like the missile launch is probably better to, than the heavy bolter overall for the heavy weapon. And I'd probably go for a combi melter thunder hammer on the sergeant. Though I feel like this is probably a loadout that isn't going to survive into 10th edition. Due to Games Workshop's normal policy of restricting model kits to what they can actually take in the box. I feel like this would be a pretty solid set of options whether or not you're in a storm or on the board. If you're in a land speeder storm though I feel like there is maybe a bit more option for taking things like shotguns or the bolters. You might just prefer to have a bit more anti-infantry fire that hits on threes when you jump out and make it into a bit more of a dedicated squad for trying to kill infantry rather than opportunistic sniper shots. For buffs and synergies for the scout squads I would keep it kind of light to be honest. Devastator Doctrine I think is pretty tempting if you are in an army that's going to be using that all game long. AP-2 sniper rifles are a lot more threatening. I generally not bother with character buffs, at least not intend to. All well and good if they nose into a reroll aura or something, but as a really cheap unit I just don't think that they're worth supporting compared with the big elite space ring units that you have access to. I guess for a fluffy choice for the ultramarines you could run them alongside Sergeant Teleon. He does have a focus buff to make the scout units hit on a 2+. plus. Still though, I don't think that's going to be worth it compared with just getting more scout squads to be honest. He costs 50 points almost as much as a whole scout squad in himself. Finally for stratagems, again I wouldn't budget too many command points towards these guys. They are super cheap. For the actual scouts themselves, I guess the smokescreen one could be okay. A minus one to hit might occasionally make the difference between them living or dying from enemy shooting. But they really aren't all that tough for the cost and I wouldn't get my hopes up too much. Otherwise I think that the other most interesting one is for the land speeder storm. One command point for shock and awe. That's a debuff that you can hand out to an enemy unit that's within 6 inches. That unit can't overwatch or set to defend and also gets a minus 1 to hit rolls for the entire of their next turn. Coming out of such a cheap and sacrificial unit you might occasionally be in the place where you could actually make some really good use of that. If you manage to throw that at a big enemy death star unit that's got a whole ton of shooting you might well have saved yourself some casualties. Otherwise, for potentially useful ones, shooting while they do an action could be okay if you're raising some banners. You can get some mortal wounds from the hellfire shells or flak missile stratagem, both of those could be okay. And the land speeder storm has a few other options, including protection against mortal wounds, falling back and shooting, and minus one to hit if they advance, but in general I'd rate those as pretty low value for one command point.
The individual Space Marine chapters can also offer some interesting things. I'm not going to go through the entire list of them this time. I feel like in general, Scouts are just something that's going to be okay-ish in just about every chapter, and neither being enormously tough nor enormously dangerous, most of the synergies just don't matter that much. I do feel that maybe Iron Hands and Space Wolves are quite good fits with them, though. Iron Hands, I think, are particularly nice, as he gets all-game Devastator Doctrine with the snipers and the missiles. Both the Scout Squads and the Land Speeder Storm will be a lot more dangerous, hitting on threes with their heavy weapons the entire time, and re-rolling ones to hit as well. It means that it makes them quite a lot more of a potent little gunboat, and they can even hit pretty accurately, even if they disembark from the Land Speeder Storm with those heavy weapons. Otherwise, I feel like the Space Wolves might be the other really standout chapter due to their different war gear options. Throwing in a free plasma pistol or power weapon into the squad is all well and good, and I feel like the option to take a melter gun instead of a missile launcher or heavy bolter could actually be pretty interesting. It makes the squad a fair bit more focused, have a unit with two melter guns jump out of a land speeder storm, as well as taking an objective and being an annoyance nuisance unit, they might actually punch through some serious damage. They definitely have the mobility to get into melter range. I'd say most of the others have at least some added value, say Imperial Fists ignoring cover or Salamander's rerolls, but perhaps Iron Hands and Space Wolves seem like some of the most standout. So how would I think about fielding scouts in game at the moment then? First up, I'd be most tempted by Sniper Rifles, a Missile Launcher and the Hammer and Combi Melter combo on the Sergeant, maybe swapping out the Missile Launcher for a Melter Gun if I were Space Wolves. I'd keep them in small squads, 5-man units ideally fielded in a Land Speeder Storm each, and I think you could take two or three of those units if you want to within your army list. That would give you a whole ton of cheap annoying units to jump around on objectives on, while the rest of the army gets to work on actually killing the opponent. I feel like a 60 point unit to set up in the midfield also isn't the worst value. It does mean that you can get onto objectives really quite a lot cheaper than infiltrators or incursors, but it seems that the majority of space marine lists at the moment prefer the extra durability that the primary space marines bring, plus infiltrators have their own great benefits like the big deep strike denial aura and their Helix Gauntlet for added toughness. In any case, if I were using them in Land Speeder Storms, I want to set them up well hidden behind cover, or you could potentially even just outrange the opponent due to their enormous movement. If your opponent doesn't have a serious amount of firepower, you could potentially hover at some range and plink off a few sniper shots and heavy weapon shots before moving up to skirmish over objectives, but in general I would be wanting to use those as annoying trading units on the midfield board, potentially zooming up units to do actions like raise banners, just jumping on objectives that are a really long way away and you wouldn't have the movement to reach them otherwise, or potentially doing things like using the Land Speeder Storm as an expendable thing to grab Oaths of Moment with. It's a great unit for that, being very cheap and not having too bad toughness and enormous speed. If you were grabbing far-flung objectives, you could think about doing slightly gamey things with the Land Speeder Storm, potentially hovering it very near to line of sight blocking terrain, and when the enemy guns down the vehicle, hide the scouts out behind the line of sight blocking terrain, so they're going to be safe for another turn. I feel like the unit in general is pretty powerful for mauling slightly lower defence enemy units holding objectives as well. Toughness 3 or 4 light infantry are going to be at least fairly easily damaged by them. The Storm has got a fair few anti-infantry shots, plus yet a few more quality shots out of the squad itself. I feel like there's a lot of options regarding keeping the scouts on board or disembarking them somewhere useful. I guess if you did deliver the cargo into the midfield and you set up the scouts on a fairly safe midfield objective, you could then use the land speeder storm as a disruptive trading piece, maybe forcing the enemy to charge it if they want to deal with it, or even making nuisance charges of yourself and locking up enemy heavy weapons, which you might be able to charge all the way in their own deployment zone with movement 18 inches. You could even throw out the minus one to hit stratagem on something if you felt like it. In general, I feel like these could be really quite useful and annoying units to deal with on the opponent's front. On paper, they're really not that dangerous, so you don't really want to devote all that much resources to killing them, but having to chew through both a transport and then a squad that falls out somewhere is kind of hard to do. I feel like squads in transports do have a bit of value all in their own in that way. I guess perhaps the biggest downside is that the scouts are fairly easy to kill when they're disembarked. The whole unit doesn't spit out an enormous amount of damage for the cost, and lacking objective secured is kind of annoying if you're playing objective games. Overall, I'd say they're fairly solid, but perhaps not auto include. As mentioned for four deployment options, it seems that most people very much prefer the various Phobos units. Incursors, and particularly Infiltrators, are very popular right now. Objective secured and a 3 plus save is great, and if you want a cheaper unit than that, then Eliminators are also very tempting. They can get some big anti tank shots and potentially movement shenanigans with the Instigator Bolt Carbine. I guess for Landspeeder Storm units, you're probably weighing them up against other cheap damage dealer type space marine units, 
Things like land speeder tornadoes and attack bikes might come to mind at the moment. Again, those units are pretty cheap and very fast. I guess the biggest advantage that the land speeder storm and the scouts have over that is that you can have infantry on the objective to hold things down a bit better, plus do actions. And also that just in general, the proposition of the land speeder storm and scouts is just a lot more durable for the points than, say, a random attack bike or a single land speeder. I feel like there's enough room competitively for the both of them. You certainly could have both of them in one list as well, but I feel like there's going to be some competition for roles. You're only going to want so many chief expendable units away from the core battle line and your very big damage dealers. Lastly, just for one example of their being used in a top list, here's an Iron Hands list that I featured on the channel recently by Michael Duff, fifth at the Bolton War Grand Tournament, and this one features a couple of units of scouts in land speeder storms, set up with a sniper rifles, missile launchers, and thunder hammer on the sergeant. Most of the rest of the list is just enormous amounts of damage, and there are plenty of other objective grabbers throughout the list, two units of infiltrators and two land speeder tornadoes. So between that and the scouts, it does look like random units to grab objectives and play for those are quite plentiful. I've definitely seen them used really quite a lot for the Space Wolves as well. Extra plasma pistols and a melter gun option are both pretty nice. In any case, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Would you be tempted to put some Space Marine Scouts on the table in this new Arcs of Omen world? And if you are, then what sort of flavour of them are you running? Look forward to hearing your thoughts. If you'd like to see some more videos like this, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming just about every day. I'll leave a link to another similar unit review for aggressors down in the video description. Feel free to check that out if you'd like to watch something similar. Finally, if you'd like to help support this channel and help keep the videos coming, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.